Okay, so I'm, I'm Daniel, I'm from um, DECA. We are an independent, independent software vendor um, of uh, products um, to make uh, portals um, smarter. We've been founded in two, 2012, and I think it's not, no secret that um, most parts of our team have been working with uh, Enterprise before. Um, they went um, insolvent. So we are based in Germany, Karlsruhe, and we are uh, providing services basically in uh, MediaWiki, Laravel, and uh, SharePoint uh, environments. So um, this is basically a, uh, a follow-up of um, the presentation my colleague Michael has given to you um, two years ago. Two years ago, we. Um, um, have started with um, a, a big um, customer project and here I would like to give you an update about um, that project. Um, the agenda is um, brief words about the project sponsor, the background, um, then the current status of uh, this project. I'll give you a demonstration and then um, I'll give you some, some insights into um, the implementation um, the opportunities and challenges we had with um, MediaWiki and Semantic uh, MediaWiki. So the project sponsor um, sits in uh, Zürich, in Switzerland. This is um, the so-called Build Heritage Service um, of the Canton of um, Zürich. And this is a part of the administration of the Canton. And they have uh, the legal mandate to preserve um, the historical monuments in the Canton. And uh, we are talking about uh, around 5,000, 6,000 um, monuments uh, which are situated around uh, Zürich and inside Zürich. Um, this uh, built heritage um, service has a couple of departments um, with uh, dedicated tasks. So they provide documentation about the monuments, uh, books, for example, presentations and they do um, public relations. They consult um, the owners of uh, monuments. So if you have bad luck, then you, you, you just bought an, uh, a, a residential building which turned out to be um, protected by law. And this means you cannot insert a in, indoor pool, for example. So, um, so they are providing you with consulting what you may do and may not do with um, your um, preserved building. Then they maintain um, the inventory of all monuments. Um, uh, this is a, a register and it's a collection of data and photographs and uh, diaries about um, the monuments. Um, the project is called ODB, that's the Object Database, uh, object in the sense of a, of a building, an object in German. And um, this replaces an existing system, an existing database software. And um, it's fairly a huge um, project and I can tell you if it fails then we're gonna be in the newspapers in Switzerland. So it's really a serious uh, thing. Um, so the, the, the goal of the um, new system is that at the end of the, of the project, um, the people there in, in the service are enabled to maintain the register of historical monuments, that they are enabled to generate reports and publications from within um, uh, the ODB system and that um, uh, the system provides them with a one-stop shop that integrates uh, their daily workflows and the relevant data which they need uh, from different external data sources in one place to perform their daily work. Um, and I think we are talking about um, 22, 40 um, people working on a daily basis uh, with uh, that system. So this means if you have a downtime, then um, the phone is going to ring in Karlsruhe and you have to do something because they cannot continue um, their daily work. Um, a big 
um, challenge in, in the project is the integration of data sources. We have a in parallel, um, there's a, a migration um, project ongoing, and this migration project um, takes existing older data sets, um, scans them. Um, they're, for example, they're, they're in, 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 in uh, hard copies, they're uh, books, for example, and um, then by another company, um, these old data sets um, must be prepared to be uh, inserted um, into uh, the new database and uh, they have really lots of um, old data which is going to be migrated. Um, then also we have, so to say, living data which comes from existing uh, data sources which are tapped in, um, for example, ownership um, or, or information about particular buildings which can be requested from within the new ODB system. Um, the, the goals that are pursued by our, our customer is that, um, yeah, in theory, we should have a short time frame from design to operation. Uh, I mean, you know, all that um, building a prototype based on uh, semantic media wiki just goes fairly quick. You go really a long way, 90% or so, but then um, when it comes about customizations, um, um, then it consumes, this consumes time. Um, we are right now um, in the second year of the project. This is longer than originally planned for. Uh, reasons for that are that, of course, um, change requests uh, are coming in. That, um, for example, the users see that things that have been designed in, in the detailed specification, this, that this doesn't work or looks like they intended, so we change it. And these are all fairly formal processes. Um, so this takes time. Um, another goal is that um, uh, the current number of tools is going to be reduced. Um, it's uh, user-friendly, so it should have a, a modern user interface. It should support mobile devices. And um, one um, uh, big goal is that it's uh, a non-proprietary proprietary product, uh, which is uh, open source and which can be given to other uh, cantons which have um, also such services uh, for free. So um, we have applied for that project and luckily we got it and we have offered them to build it based on MediaWiki and Semantic MediaWiki and you guys all know that Semantic MediaWiki is really good in uh, combining text and data, and this is really where the strength of, um, of, of, this, of this stack comes into play in this project because we have uh, tons of um, user created um, text and we have data. And this all's come, all, all comes together in that um, uh, new solution. Um, okay, so the current status, now what's uh, finished um, since um, nearly one year is the, the design phase, so we have, we have created there the, the other customer um, a, a super detailed specification, um, which is then uh, approved and um, enters uh, the implementation phase. Here we are um, delivering software, we are conducting functional tests with other customer. Also, uh, the end users are involved, so they are given our, our software uh, deliveries and they are testing it. And then they might complain or uh, feel happy about it. Um, yeah, And of course, we work and scope changes, this is our um, daily business. After the implementation phase is finished, um, uh, we will enter uh, the next phase, which will be hopefully a shorter one. This is then about um, bringing, bringing the func functionality together with uh, the integrated data um, in, in so-called integration tests, and then afterwards we have acceptance tests, and then we are finished with um, 
uh, the implementation and procurement of the of the software. Okay, so this was probably a bit boring for you. Now let's um, go into a uh, demonstration. Actually, it's not really a demonstration, but a commented um, uh, video, which I have prepared for you. I could demonstrate it, but it wasn't so sure that um, that we have a, a stable internet connection here. All right, so this is a walkthrough on the most important user interfaces of the OTP system. There's my mouse pointer. Um, there you go. All right. Um, this is the Chameleon user interface. As you probably see, we, you have uh, the menu in, 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 the, in the top row, and then you have um, the body. Um, now let's take a look at it. So um, this is the detailed view of a particular building. Okay. Um, let me scroll down and up uh, a bit. Um, the detailed view comprises a couple of sections that can be collapsed or expanded um, individually. Um, the user interface is responsive. So we have um, one user interface which covers all um, end user devices. So this is the, the stacked view of the um, user interface. Um, each building comes with a picture and a map. So the picture is coming actually from an external database, image database, and here this is um, the famous GIS browser from uh, the Canton Zurich. And this is kind of Google Maps with um, a lot of more layers uh, in it. And we have integrated that, so for example, um, the user can <coughs> locate uh, the building in the map uh, using uh, a pin. This is the red pin you see there. Um, so each building uh, links to a couple of um, other entities that re represent a particular aspect of it. So for example, we have their journal, which keeps tracks of changes to the building. We have the municipality. We have uh, the list of inventory documents, we have the people, draftsmen, for example, which are involved um, with that building. And if uh, the owner uh, start renovations or plan for other modifications to their building, then they are advised to involve our customer. They, our customer provides them with uh, consulting during the project and also documents the changes in a kind of diary, which is called um, the object journal, which we are opening here. So the object journal is uh, the diary of uh, modifications to the building, and each um, um, entry in the object um, journal comes with a date, an author, um, the, the name of the project, um, the description, and a photo. Um, so the user um, can uh, create a new entry into the object journal by uh, opening a, uh, a form. Yeah, one well, good work. Uh, he uses the form to enter what he has discussed on site with uh, the user. For example, here, uh, no indoor pool uh, for this nice building. Um, and he can, and the user can. Um, uh, import a photo from the picture database, which he selects there in a in an image picker. Um, actually, in the background, this um, picture is being imported into the media wiki as a file, and then um, converted into a thumbnail, and then being displayed with um, that uh, object journal. Now let's go back to the um, detail view of the object again. Another important task of um, the, our customer is that, um, they, that they maintain a, a, um, uh, the inventory of, um, 
um, of the legal status and descriptions of um, each uh, monument. And these inventories can come with really, really with um, a lot of uh, user-generated um, documents and, and content. And let me create a new inventory document for this um, particular building. Now, um, a form opens again and offers a couple of form fields, and each of these form fields is a rich text, fi rich text field, with, uh, which has a couple of formatting options. This was really important because wiki text or uh, plain text was not an, an option for, for the customer. So, um, so he enters text or he can enter um, uh, images which can, and collections of images which are um, collected here again in the, in the image picker. Um, I don't know how many photos they, they, they maintain there in their image database, but it might be really a, a high number, a couple of thousands, I guess. And here you can pick them and uh, preview the metadata and then decide if you want to introduce it and uh, into this inventory document. And uh, additionally to the um, pure image, also additional metadata is going to be uh, imported. So this is just one example of, a, of um, an external system that we, we have um, interfaced and opened up, so to say, to MediaWiki and uh, semantic MediaWiki in this context here. Um, another important feature for the users there is uh, the report builder. I'm going to show to you uh, next. Okay, so this is the metadata, the imported images. Now let's return to the detailed view of this um, building. And then let's go to the report builder. As I said, the, the end users, end users' daily business is to generate reports. Uh, for example, what residential buildings are um, in, in a particular street, in a particular municipality, with which um, um, uh, building here, and of what type of buildings, etc. And since we, we have introduced all this data in, um, the, in the common database underlying um, SMW, we can, of course, use the full beauty of, um, of query forms. <coughs> thank you, thank you, Jaron. <laughs> and um, can generate reports here and slice and dice through um, the data. So for example, here I'm generating a report of, or a list of all residential buildings which are erected between 1800 and 1900. And you see we have um, autocomplete forms there. And then I'm submitting the query and I get um, the preview of the results. And now I can export, I can decide into which format I want to export um, this data, for example, as PDF or as um, an Excel sheet or a zipped um, archive of um, PDFs. And this is here uh, the result of such a merged PDF file which combines all of the um, PDF documents for this um, particular uh, building or inventory. And um, yeah, you see there's also metadata given um, for easy navigation there in the, in the left-hand side, navigation bar, et cetera. Okay, so this is uh, the report um, user interface, which is really neat. Um, and of course, there is also a retrieval interface which allows for searching for doing full text search or metadata based search um, on, on the data. So here, for example, oops. Um, okay, so it's not. Okay. 
Um, what you see there is uh, the retrieval interface. I've entered there a, a search text. And now um, a, a list of um, full text hits um, is being displayed on the right hand side there. In the body we have 15 um, results and on the left hand side we have uh, what we call uh, facets. <coughs> Facets <coughs> is an alternative representation of the results, namely um, the available metadata that are contained amongst all of the results. And here we have um, um, uh, the facets of uh, the municipality, which is the Gemeinde, and um, other things, for example, the type of the building, or coordinates, and um, the date, and here of direction of the, of the building and basically for you this translates into attributes. So what you have on the left hand side there is a list, maps one to one into one particular um, attribute and uh, the attribute values are displayed if I click on such a facet and this I do now and I click on uh, the municipality and here I have um, the list of municipalities which are amongst these um, um, uh, retrieval hits, search hits. Zurich um, has four hits, it does we has three, etc. And now I can drill down. Yeah, for example, I'm interested in only getting um, the buildings which are located in Zurich. And I simply select this um, value. And of course, I get additional hits. Maybe if a building is for, I don't know, legal reasons are uh, defined to sit um, in um, a couple of um, municipalities, municipalities. Okay, so now I have um, added my, uh, a second facet, namely the, uh, the type of the building. And now I have shrunk, I have collapsed um, my uh, retrieval list, my search list. Um, into one particular building, namely this is an, an annex to the Zurich uh, um, uh, railway station. And let us briefly inspect um, the detailed view here of the, of the result. We have some important metadata. We have all the metadata here in this collapsible table. And we have that some a couple of direct actions in form of hyperlinks which allows the user to perform um, actions with particular this building. Carsten, how, how many minutes? Uh, about six. Okay. Okay, so this retrieval interface is not um, the standard interface. This is based on uh, the enhanced retrieval uh, extension. Okay, so this is um, the demo. Now let me briefly tell you about um, about the about the implementation just really briefly the data model um, evolves around a couple of uh, central uh, categories the inventory the, the object which is a building the, the diary of object etc and you know that yeah, we, you can um, define really complicated um, um, attributes and category relationships in SMW, and we are really glad that we have been able, uh, that we have been given such a great tool to um, create a, a user model which meets uh, the expectations of the customer. Architecture, classic, um, the full stack of MediaWiki based on Linux, uh, and of course, templates. Um, I guess we have around 80 templates or something, which I would <coughs> have expected um, at the beginning of, um, the, of the project. And forms, not that many, but a lot of forms. Um, for the um, development guys here, probably interesting, we have a distributed development. Um, uh, around five persons are working, not constant time, but um, sometimes on the on the on the project, and um, each developer has uh, his um, virtual box, 
with um, a background uh, environment inside. It's using a SEND um, IDE development um, environment. And um, we have a central software repository based on JIT. And we are pushing, whenever we have something to commit, um, the PHP, the wiki schema, and uh, wiki pages into that uh, JIT repository before it then can be pulled into the staging server, which is on-site at, at the customer. Um, uh, here for, for um, creating the wiki schema, we had to develop a little tool uh, which um, um, uh, generates out of the MySQL database um, files for each template and form, etc., which can be then introduced and pushed <laughs> into uh, the JIT repository. Um, well, yeah, challenges. I mean, there are challenges which come with this nature of project. It's really a, a complex project. Um, a lot of disciplines are involved in that project and the amount of project management um, attached to it this defines it as a complex project. Um, then the end users are really non-technical, so they don't for forgive stuff that the typical media wiki or Wikipedia user would accept as being okay, that's given, that's okay, that's good enough, they don't accept that. So for example, layout and visual appearance is super important for them, and then uh, rich text editors are the only way to go. Um, wiki text, um, and text is not, it's not a good idea. Also, a big challenge, um, and people deploying SMW and MediaWiki in the field know that, Workflow, handling workflows is tedious. It's, it's nearly impossible with um, MediaWiki, but if you, have, if you know the right tricks, then, it's, um, then you can do that. Also, uh, we had to introduce uh, protecting capabilities. So here we had to implement a kind of propagation um, extension which propagates such um, uh, data um, from one object or instance to another instance. Then another terrifying thing is, I mean, I'm telling that since ages, uh, page name, we cannot, we cannot um, confront an end user with a, with, with a wiki page name. That's impossible because titles change, um, but I mean, you all know it, changing um, a wiki page name. This requires um, moving and deletion, so that's not a good idea. Also, it comes with uh, restrictions on the, the pure page name. <coughs> So we had to keep a separate title from the page name. And then if you think through it, yeah, a lot of <clears throat> other things come with it all right, in auto-completion. Yeah, the user want to auto-complete on the titles and not on the page name, but the template or the form must create um, um, uh, a, 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 a template call uh, using the page name of the autocompleted title and not the title because the title is not a valid page name in, in the wiki. Yeah, and um, this um, was a little of a headache that we overcome that. Um, and then, of course, we have a huge stack. Um, we are generating, for example, PDFs on the fly and, I mean, the user has decided not to procure um, uh, software, he wants to procure services, so therefore we had to go with the open source um, route and, well, it comes with um, bugs and... But what I can say is that um, uh, the, uh, the stack is really stable. I, I would say it's industry grade. Um, I mean, you can imagine that it'll break uh, the neck of, of a of a, of, a, of a small company, if you, um, if it turns out that you're not able to deliver um, uh, this project outcome using the selected products, so but I can say, yeah, this is really a stack which you can rely on, stable, minimal bugs, 
and the community is super responsive. Jawohl, thank you very much. Uh,